All right, so while we just sort of not killing time, but just waiting for another minute or so, um, just a bit of background to this workshop. A few weeks ago, probably maybe about four or five weeks ago, I put out a couple of um, you know Instagram questionnaires and a couple of stories about free workshops and topics. And this was number two on the list. So if you this is the first one you're kind of catching, then um, to let you know that was one uh, workshop done maybe about four weeks ago or so on how to calculate your macros, you know, and your total calories, how to set them up in terms of how many grams of protein, carbs and fats you should be aiming for. Um, and basically how to do that literally step by step. And it's the exact same sort of method and approach that I do, obviously, with all with all the private clients. So uh, that was the first one because that was the most uh, popular. Second in line is weight loss around menopause as well, which is obviously going to be quite a, um, um, a popular one, obviously, for because most fitness instructors, most of them are, are female. And at some point, you know, you're going to get to the, the age of 35, 40, 45, etc. If not, you may already be there. Um, majority, I was trying to work out an average age of private clients, and they generally are between 35 and 45. So without even specific... Uh, specifically targeting or working with women around menopause it just has happened that that has been the case as well so um looking back over over um clients from this year and last year being well over 20 to 25 private clients that have sort of come through that have been around the age group so without really being, you know it's, it's just the kind of demographic of a lot of fitness instructors um you know that you're either going to be female because that, that is the majority. Um, and at some point, you know, we're all going to be moving into that direction uh, in terms of kind of age-wise, because that's one thing, unfortunately, we can't stop is good old, good old grandfather clock and good old grandfather time. Okay, so, um, yeah. And just touching on that, if there is, I think the third one, if I do another one, which I, I probably will, it will be at the moment, it's around meal timing and supplements. However, I am always open to, to be talking and ranting about literally anything. So if there is something that is back of your mind or you want to know a little bit more about, then please feel free to let me know either via an Instagram message, an email, uh, a carrier pigeon, smoke signals, whatever. Okay, just please let me know. Um, the whole purpose of this stuff is to just give everybody um, that comes across my channel or on my emails to get some great value, you know, information. So um, it literally is your, your channel. You know, I, I want you to think about nutrition, fitness instructor, you know, aligning everything in, in that with, with you know, um, let, me, let, let me try to kind of help you out in, in any shape or form. So we talk about menopause. Um, that's it. So just get jumped into it started. Uh, I know there are quite a few people that have come across the, the you know, me in either social media or, or email, perhaps that might not know a bit of a kind of background and, and whatever. So uh, I'm quite sort of direct, uh, quite frank, quite clear, hopefully, in terms of effective coaching. We need to be clear on, on, on what we're talking about, um, put things in kind of simple terms, you know, which is always, again, uh, hopefully a sign of a good coach. But um, yeah, don't really kind of frill around and, and just kind of get straight to it. So, you know, don't be too shocked if, uh, if I come out with a couple of um, cheeky kind of comments, a bit of tongue in cheek comments. Uh, being a Asafa, a South African and a firefighter um, is literally bread and butter. You know, that's how we survive or how we get on with things at work as well. So um, as opposed to trying to be a bit, you know, iffy and a bit squeamish or a bit like sensitive about stuff, sometimes you just got to, you know, just call it what it is, I guess, and just get, you know, get on with it. You know, we're all adults off, uh, all adults off the roll, you know. Um, so that's it. Let's jump straight into it. So um, very, uh, just to follow the kind of background for those that don't know, I'm not going to be talking too much about symptom management of menopause because I'm not a doctor. Um, so I'm not going to touch on that too much as what but out of my remit. This is going to be 95% focused around, you know, what we can do from a nutrition point of view. Okay, so I'm a certified nutrition um, consultant. So I have my sort of little ticket that I can wave around if anybody's really interested in it. But um, that's going to be the kind of focus of my sort of approach. So we'll discuss a couple of symptom management things that we can do. But generally, that's out with my kind of scope. You can consult and chat with your kind of doctor about that and other medical professionals um, that, you know, is, that, that's their expertise, perhaps. Okay, so this is what we can do about losing weight through nutrition, through lifestyle, et cetera, through habits um, around, around kind of menopause, because it is obviously really quite difficult, can be really, really frustrating, you know, and, and, and can, it can lead you to jumping to 
very fatty diets, quick fixes, you know, one, worsening your health unintentionally, two, wasting a lot of money, and three, just, you know, yeah, just prolonging actually getting to the root cause and finding yourself on the, on the right kind of path, okay? So, so, so that's the kind of big, the big purpose. Anyway, that's a good five minutes uh, gone already. So let's jump straight straight to it. So welcome, and um, I'm not sure how long it's going to last. It'll probably be more than 30 minutes. I'm very aware of talking for longer than 40, 45 minutes because I get bored of myself. So I'm pretty sure you will as well. And, you know, no, no, for the best attention in the world, everybody's attention span does start waning after a certain point as well. So we want to make it fairly short, fairly quick, but not, you know, not, not, not skim over too much stuff. So um, let's just jump in. All right. So a bit of background, obviously, not, not to be condescending at all, but I think before you start any presentation, you need to give this a, a bit of a, a bit of a background, just in case, because there may be one or two gents uh, in on this as, as, as PTs, and there may be obviously a, a couple of very, very young uh, or young, younger um, ladies and females on as well. So menopause is the end of a woman's menstrual cycle, uh, marking the end of her or your reproductive days. Okay, that's that, that's pretty much it. Okay, menopause is a regular part of aging when it happens after the age of 40 generally, uh, but some women can go through menopause early. Okay, so the window is, is around kind of 40, but can literally vary between 35 and kind of 45. Okay, um, I've not taken age of anybody who's on here, so I'm, I'm aware that I may be talking to people that or are looking for information kind of leading into it, may have sort of started to, to, to head into pre, pre-menopause or perhaps are, you know, going through it or just on the other side of it, perhaps, and now wanting to lose a weight. So I'm just kind of broadening the, 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 the direction of, of, of the language quite, quite broadly. So just to make sure we cover everybody. And essentially, it's, it's, it's all to do with hormones, okay, uh, massively. So my uh, high school biology and everything else has finally come to fruition. Um, I'm not going to go into too detail about the kind of menstrual cycle, but hopefully we've got a little bit of awareness about that, um, about your own bodies from days 1 to 14 up to 28. And it really is to do with the two you know, female hormones, estrogen and pro- progesterone. So uh, hormone changes, the body releases less estrogen. And at times, it's not a case of just release, re, uh, releasing less estrogen or, or your body producing less. It's also the case that you can go through really quite fluctuating levels as well. So unlike perhaps in a normal kind of menstrual kind of cycle from day one to day 14, there'll be a nice slow gradual kind of build up and then it'll kind of wane off until um, the day two and eight before, the kind of, before your period starts on, on, on day one. So it's, it's fairly kind of regular, it's building, building up, building up because it's, it's ridding your uterus for the, for the lining, for the receiving of the, of the egg, et cetera, et cetera. But once that, you know, happens, then estrogen kind of fluctuates and that's where progesterone sort of, you know, um, increases. So um, it isn't the case now of we're just reducing kind of less. There are, there can be times throughout menopause where the, the levels really go up and down. So it throws out your mood, it throws out your sleep. You know, the hot flushes obviously come on, um, just feel really disruptive. You know, it just really throws you out of whack. You know, the female hormones do, even through your, your normal menstrual cycle, do play a part. You know, when in certain days of the menstrual cycle, you feel better, you feel a bit more energetic, you feel a bit more up for it, you feel up for a night out, you feel maybe a bit better on your body, all, all these kind of things. And then there are other parts of the menstrual cycle as you go from your, you know, teens all the way to your 20s, 30s, or 40s where you just feel a bit, you know, a bit bloated and a bit, uh, a bit lack of energy, all that kind of stuff. So, so, so that happens normally, like during your, 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 your menstrual cycle. So you can imagine now when you hit menopause, if estrogen and progesterone start kind of like playing kind of roller coasters, that's also going to, you know, accentuate that as well. Okay. So it's just something to be kind of be, be aware of. pre menopause, obviously the time before and inconsistent, or, uh, you can have obviously inconsistent periods. Estrogen levels start to decline. Um, and men, menopause, you know, your menopause or once, um, or it's generally accepted that after a year since your last period, it is pretty much the, you know, the, the, the end of your natural reproduction and the onset of, uh, of some symptoms. Okay, so it's, it's not a, a clearly, from my understanding, and certainly can kind of reading and discussions that I've had about it, it's not a clear cut, you know, um, sort of journey experience or, or, or kind of time. So, because maybe you you know your friends or your or, or um, sibling or your, your sister or something like that may have had this essay thirty eight and then hot flush first and then this and and, and then that it's, it's it's not that clear cut if you know what I mean everybody will be very very kind of different and it's just that awareness around the the changes in, in, in estrogen the changes in hormone levels how it impacts you okay and then what we can do about it to kind of limit the the impact. And what we can do to make sure that we still stay, you know, lean, healthy, 
fit this role model, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so um, hopefully that just kind of covers a little bit of the uh, background, but probably nothing there that I've said that uh, uh, nobody knows. So quickly touching on estrogen, so not going too deep into this, but it's the awareness more than anything else, okay? It, it really is the kind of awareness that estrogen is a vital, you know, hormone, really, really important. Uh, it works in tandem with progesterone, uh, progesterone, also have testosterone in your bodies as well, okay? You know, they're all, well, there's a lot more hormones, but those are the three kind of major ones uh, for, 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 for women. Um, so estrogen is associated with mood, energy, and even sex drive, okay? It's been shown to obviously release um, the kind of happy hormones, of oxytocin, oxytocin and serotonin as well. So those kind of like love, affectionate, you know, high mood um, hormones. So if they're taking a plunge, obviously that's going to impact, you know, late, not relationships, but just impact your, your outlook, your, your perhaps your patience, your empathy, your sympathy, all these kind of things, okay? Um, generally, maybe hence when your boyfriend or husband walks in with the, uh, the old flowers and chocolate and just go like, uh, you know, stop shouting at me kind of thing or whatever else, that's just because... You know of, the, of, the, of those normal cycles that are generally you know way beyond your sort of uh, control because there's not much you can really do about them. Um, estrogen is created and secreted from mucous membranes, so check this one out. Um, that means eyeballs, nose, mouth, and obviously down there in uh, lady bits. So um, symptoms obviously are things like you know thrush, urinary infections, dryness, okay, all that kind of stuff. Those, those can be symptoms when estrogen starts lowering because it's produced in this mu mucous membranes. So mucous membranes, obviously, anywhere there's a bit of saliva, but it kind of, you know, it's not, it's not mucus, but, you know, a bit of like um, moisture or wetness, et cetera, around eyeballs and, and everywhere else. So um, that can impact that. Uh, it can lower immune health, really important, obviously, in, in um, immunity. It gives you, you know, um, regarded as sort of womanly features, you know, so boobs and, and hips and, and bums, okay, so boobs and bums, um, so, so yep, and hence why when men start taking estrogen or if men want to move down to being more kind of lady-like, estrogen is a hormone that they take because it gives them, you know, boobs and a bit more of a kind of fuller rounder figure, okay, um, and obviously we know why women have a bit more of a fuller rounder figure because it is to do with um, you know, birth, caring, and 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 pregnancy, and all, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, that's just how how kind of human nature kind of kind of works uh, when nature works rather. Um, it also helps with your <clears throat> excuse me insulin sensitivity, which means it also helps break down glucose and fat. So when you start having lower estrogen, you're immediately becoming a little bit less sensitive to insulin. Okay, which means that it can be a little bit more difficult to break down certain foods. So what you got away with when you were 20 or 30. Your body, you know, is going like, nah, not, not anymore. You're not going to get away with those cheeky donuts or, or cookies and whatever else. So, you know, all those things that even, even for myself, you know, with high testosterone as, as, as a kind of male, things that we got away with in your 20s and 30s, once you hit that 40, 45, kind of 50 mark, your body just reacts a little bit differently because it's a change in, in hormones. Men, much lower testosterone. Women, much lower estrogen. Okay, And they both have uh, an impact on uh, insulin sensitivity. Um, can disrupt sleep as well. So controlling the body temperature through the um, hypothalamus. So, you know, not, ah, not flashes, hot flashes, night sweats, all these kind of things. Again, you can, you know, those are some of the symptoms that are um, uh, not portrayed, but are sort of shown or, or realized, I guess, um, through changes and drops in estrogen. It's also really important in, in, in collagen. So if you have existing sort of joint issues, tendons, ligaments, et cetera, then you can really, really feel that particularly first thing in the morning, particularly in the kind of colder nights, uh, a drop in estrogen impacts the, 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 the collagen building um, properties of, of your connective tissue. So it, it can make that even, even kind of worse or more um, apparent, you know, that you are back sore, knee sore, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So when all these things may or may not happen. So again, you may experience literally just, just two of them. You know, you may experience literally all of them and just that's just the way, you know, your body is, unfortunately, but you may experience a couple. It's probably really, really rare that you, you may go through menopause and not experience any of them. OK, so it's just that awareness. So if you've been following my country for a long time, this is a big, big push on a push, but a big mantra. All right. In terms of life in life, lifestyles, life 
um, controlling stress, everything else. It's about controlling the controllables, okay? There's no point trying to control, well, the uncontrollables, okay? Things that we can't control, like the weather and everything else. But what we can do is not expend energy, frustration, and everything else on something that no matter how hard you shout at it, is not going to change, okay? So for all the wool in the world, if I look at this bottle of water and I say, Jack D and Coke, Jack D and Coke, Jack D and Coke, it's not going to happen, okay? Because I'm not, I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm not a magician, okay? I'm not a wizard. So I've got to accept it that that's, that's water, as simple as that, okay? So there's not much we can do about menopause, it's natural and avoidable. We can start to reframe our mindset about, about aging and lessen the anxiety and the worry, because I understand that that is through conversations, through clients that they're in that, that age, you know, area, uh, that is a big thing. It's a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress, a lot of worry. Um, so if you can start just reducing that and do a bit more acceptance and, 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 and everything else, then it can straight away put us on a, on, a, on a really good foot. And trying to control nature is draining and, I can't see that word, but draining and like pissing against the wind, of course, okay? It's pointless and messy. Okay, or maybe this is a guy thing I said, of course. So, um, yeah, trying to control nature, it just isn't going to work. Okay, it's just, it's just not going to work. So, we focus on the controllables. Click on back in here. There we go. So, can we change or alter hormones? Not really. Okay, the reality is, is that, you know, we, we can't plug in into our, there's no, there's no plug in button and tap in a week computer code or software code to go, oh, you know, increase estrogen and decrease this and all that kind of stuff. There is obviously human um, hormone therapy as well. So HRT. And if things are really, really bad, then yes, you know, if you are really struggling for a, for a long period of time, then your, your doctor will no doubt look into the possibility of human uh, HRT in terms of testosterone, possibly, or obviously estrogen as well, just to help, help, help ease you know, help sort of ease that that change and, 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 the, and, and the, the drop in levels. So um, it's something that you need to be aware of when you do go see your doctor about the time of the month it may be, because we know that that's naturally going to be diff at different levels throughout different stages of the, um, of, the, of, the, of the cycle. So, you know, there is HRT there, but it's certainly not going to be the first port of call. Um, and some doctors are still very, very hesitant to prescribe uh, testosterone as well. Okay, so... Um, my focus would be to, to focus on, on, on you and what you can control um, and not see that as, as, a, as a first port of call because it's not going to solve everything. It, you know, it, it, it might solve the, 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 the hormone fluctuations, but it's not going to solve all the symptoms and your weight, weight loss and fat loss, which is, you know, primarily what we're going to be talking about tonight. Cool. So I'm very aware I've literally spoken about 100 mile an hour. Hopefully that is okay. I'm not sure if there's a playback speed slower button, but... Uh, uh, there is quite a few to kind of slides to kind of get through. So hopefully it's all, it's all going along all right. Um, so what can we do, right? What can we do? What are our controllables? We focus on two key areas. And that for me is with nutrition and lifestyle. Okay, right? And that is pretty much what we do with, with, with the, the private clients as well. There's, there's, that's, that's it, okay? That is the be law and, and end all. Nutrition and lifestyle. And I always do generally sometimes put that into brackets with, with, with habits. Habits form your lifestyle. When you start changing your kind of habits, small habits in the right direction, we are in effect changing our lifestyle, okay? If you have poor habits, shit habits, bad habits that take you away from where you want to be, that's not a great lifestyle. That's not a lifestyle that you probably want to be living, okay? So habits lifestyle are a bit kind of interconnective. So as a brief overview, this is the seven step plan to help fat loss around menopause. And I'll go into each one in a little bit more detail in the subsequent slides, okay? But feel free to take a quick snapshot of this or screenshot whatever else, because this is pretty much, um, this is pretty much it, okay? So out of our seven, lucky seven, first thing to do is gonna increase protein to around about two grams per kilogram body weight, BWs of body weight, okay? Two grams per kilogram body weight, and for the last seven years of looking at um, food diaries from fitness instructors, and as I said, majority females and ladies, um, I know that you're under eat protein, okay? I could almost, you know, hedge any bet that, uh, you know, a lot of people that are listening in right now, you're probably not hitting 110, 120, 130, 140 grams of, 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 of uh, protein, okay? For whatever reasons, okay? So first port of call. Include more dairy, more fiber, and some uh, well-chosen supplements. Okay, fruit comes first. I didn't put supplements at, at the end by mistake. It's because dairy, fiber supplements will go in that order. Okay, fruit comes first. 
a consistent calorie deficit for the obvious reason. That is the only way, the only way that we can lose weight over a long term. Okay, a consistent calorie deficit. Uh, I'm sure I've said it before in many other workshops, but nobody, excuse my French here, but nobody gives a shit if you can stay, if you have a calorie deficit for a day. Okay, if you were in a calorie deficit for today, you know, by whatever, two, three, four hundred calories, and you're like, yeah, it's Monday, I'm a calorie deficit. And I will go, <laughs> I don't care, right? So what, right? You need to be in a deficit for like over the week stuff, yeah? Consistent period of time, okay? So think about, we get really, really narrowly drawn into this like whatever meal and day on day kind of thing where we need to sit, sit back and open up the kind of, the, 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 the scope to be in over the week, over two weeks, over the week, you know, three weeks, four weeks, et cetera, okay? Um, sleep and de-stress, weight training, exclamation mark weight training, uh, mindful eating, practice real and reactive hunger. So we'll talk a little bit more, more about that, obviously, on that slide. But mindful eating is obviously big, big key, particularly when your hormones are pushing buttons that you are unaware of, all right? You need to be really aware about your body, about what some sort of hunger you're kind of looking for, you know? Um, so I don't want to give away too much of that too soon. And then, of course, the biggest thing is up here, the top two inches, your mindset, your self-worth, your self-value is more important than obviously than the weight on the scales, okay? And yes, it's something that, you know, you hold strong to yourself and I want to be this way. I want to be pre-wedding weight. I want to be pre-baby weight. I want to be what I was when I was 20, when I was 30, you know? And I totally get that and I support that and I'll, I'll, I'll do my utmost to get people as lean and athletic and happy and confident as possible. But the mantra isn't weight loss. It's looking and feeling great. Yeah, it's looking and feeling good confident all that kind of stuff and putting more value on, on on your lifestyle management of your of your classes of your family of your business all those kind of things as well as obviously looking kind of good okay we are not that aesthetically driven that we sacrifice all these things just to be back to seven stone or, or eight stone or whatever it was okay cool so those are the seven things so first up have a quick sip of water here two seconds time wise as well right 25 bucks okay so protein and reasons one two three four four easy reasons but there's probably can listen another four, three, three, three or four on top of that first of all it increases your calorie expenditure easily with no exercise okay so we hopefully know about tdee you know total daily energy ex expenditure we need to make sure that we create a deficit now I'm not hopping on too much about previous kind of workshops but most people think about creating a deficit by cutting calories, okay? So if this is energy output, this is energy in, people think I need to lose weight, calorie deficit, that means I must cut calories, cut calories, go on a diet, right? And you just basically shoot yourself in the foot because you've actually got classes to teach, okay? What we do in Group X is we create a deficit by increasing your output. There's a deficit right there that doesn't mean you need to starve, okay? I mean, fantastic, right? So increasing energy output by eating more protein. Because point number two, it takes six times more energy to digest and assimilate than carbs or fats, all right? So it just takes up a lot more energy. The food that you're eating is, is, is calorific, that's energy, but you're having to expend more energy just to process and digest it and move those amino acids around the body, okay? So it's an easy win. It's the easiest win ever. Uh, helps maintain muscle, muscle tissue, which is obviously absolutely fundamental in fat loss, it's even more fundamental if that's a possible, if that's a possible, if, uh, if that's a word, if you're in the fitness industry, right? Teaching classes, yoga, Pilates, spin, body pump, you name it, any kind of boxer size, hit class, anything. If you want to be lean and athletic, guess what? You need muscle tissue because that's what makes you squat and makes you jump and makes you walk upstairs and all these things. Okay. Um, a way to do with obviously fat loss is reduce the fat, not reduce muscle, water, and fat, okay? Um, which is obviously what those kind of really, really drastic, you know, calorie diets obviously, obviously do. Um, the protein does not make you look hench, okay? Been training in the gym for a long, long time, and I know a lot, a lot of guys have trained for a long time, have a lot of protein, do a lot of weight training, and guess what? You know, we're not massive, okay? It takes a lot of work and a lot of effort to, to grow muscle, Um and the fact that women have, you know, a fraction, it's around about a tenth, a tenth of the testosterone that men have 
means that it's really difficult for women to grow, you know, really, really big and, 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 and kind of muscly, okay? But what it can do is keep you um, more kind of anabolic, look after net muscle, uh, net protein synthesis. So your muscles are continually going under um, that process, continually getting bro broken down to, to just the way that they sort of designed. So unless you're constantly looking to support and maintain and kind of grow the muscle tissue, you will be in a catabolic state so muscle protein synthesis is literally, are you anabolic or are you catabolic? Are you building, sorry, are you building or are you destroying muscle tissue? Okay, so it's, it's one or the other. So right now you're gonna think to yourself, do I have amino acids running in my body? Am I supporting my muscle tissue or am I not? Yeah, because if you go for too long without supporting it, your body is gonna be coming along and protein is gonna get kind of eroded away. Okay, so you need to like constantly support it up. But this simple, simple fact, is that your body cannot store protein, it can only store carbs and fats. So you need to continually and regularly ingest protein through liquid form or through food form, all right? Um, and that, yep, you better, it, it's one of the, the key things that we do with our clients, make sure we have three, four or five meals where there is really good protein throughout the day, because it's an instant trigger, it's a, such an easy win to, to kind of do, all right? So fat loss, point number one, dairy and fiber, Dairy, and, and obviously, um, if you if you uh, vegan, then it's, it's it, you're gonna not not miss out, but you'll have soy and a few other options to kind of use. But dairy uh, for for everybody else, rich in vitamins and minerals, a slow slow release protein called casein helps maintain bone strength and increases several health markers as well. Okay, it is regarded still regarded as a really top quality food to be having. You can have dairy through yogurts, obviously, as well as obviously milk, um, but. Vegan options, soy as well, no problem, almond as well. Uh, a lot of good benefits from, from them, perhaps not as, as, as action-packed across the broad spectrum of all vitamins and minerals as dairy. However, as long as you're fairly varied with all of your vegan options, uh, you should be good to go, okay? Fiber helps you poop, clears out your gut, which is really, really important, okay? Gut health is, is, is more important for women around menopause age than pretty much anybody else, okay? Because you can... You can store estrogen in, in the gut as well. And if your body is not using it as it kind of needs to be, then it can cause problems and a bit of IBS and a bit of gut discomfort and all that kind of stuff as well. So you want to be going on a regular basis, okay? So that means fiber. That means a bit more fruit, a bit more veg. And ideally, if you're going for veg, obviously all the colorful ones are all great and all fine, but you, you, you want to try, you know, as best as possible, get more of the green leafy stuff, more of the sprouts, broccoli, cauliflower, and kale. Those are your top four, okay? Coming into winter, it's probably a little bit easier to get them into the diet with the likes of soups and stews, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, if you're having, say, none of them, and you start having, say, two of them every second day, every third day, you're moving in the right direction, okay? It doesn't need to be from zero to 100, you know, on it or off it, good or bad. If you can move yourself from here where you're at, and come find a good happy ground gray area, then at least you're, you're still this much better off, right? Doesn't need to be perfect, fuck perfect. You just need to be, you know, moving in the right direction, okay? So yeah, plus it helps uh, satiety. So it helps keep you feeling fuller for longer, which obviously helps reduce the amount of food you put into your mouth, which helps you reduce the total calories that you eat over the day, okay? Which is what drives fat loss and weight loss, okay? Cool. Supplements. So a couple of supplements that are definitely worthwhile taking. Um, for me, the only two that are really an addition here to the ones that I would be, so the three that, um, that I would be recommending anyway to listen to anybody is vitamin B complex, magnesium, and zinc. Vitamin D and omega-3 for me is pretty much a, a near enough and non-negotiable, uh, okay? It's a, almost a, a must-have for, for health. Vitamin D, especially uh, immune health, muscle health, um, particularly in kind of winter time when we don't get as much kind of sunlight up and up, up here in, in Europe and UK and, and around us, vitamin D really, really important. Okay. Really, really important. Uh, the key thing about vitamin D is you can have literally up to 2000 international units a day, quite, quite happily, quite, quite healthily. Okay. Um, make sure that the, the dose is, 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 is enough. Vitamin B complex is a water soluble vitamin. So your body can't store it. There's no real danger about over, you know, over consuming vitamin B. Uh, your pee will go a little bit yellow if you have a little bit of vitamin B in the morning. So your first two trips to the toilet, expect to see just a, a darker 
um, yellowy color, okay? Um, it's totally fine. Um, but yeah, a good broadband, vitamin B is really good, really, really, really nice and cheap. Um, particularly B6 is, 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 is the one you want. Uh, Omega-3 is important. You get two, two um, uh, oils um, in there. And the key is to make sure that you get the both equate to more than 1.8 grams, okay? So it's EHA and DPA that normally come in like a two to one ratio. Normally like something like 220 for the one and 440 for the other. You've got to add them together and then make sure that it, it exceeds 1.8 grams. So generally for most uh, brands, you'd be need to take it three or four capsules of omega-3s, okay? Uh, I mean, magnesium, zinc, all very, really important minerals, all right? So those are the kind of top five uh, if you're heading towards menopause that I would definitely uh, consider. And if you're not anywhere near there, and if you're perhaps a, uh, a male, a, a gent, then vitamin D, omega-3s, 100%, okay? But they're all good. Consistent calorie deficit is the only way to lose weight or burn body fat, okay? And I didn't just say calorie deficit, as I said, I ranted on about it before, but it's consistent. It's got to be consistent, okay? Focus on over the week, as you don't burn fat in 24 hours, okay? I know sometimes we, you may, if you're into the habit of daily, of daily weighing daily, I would probably move away from that because you, you're, going to, you're going to store food, you're going to store carbs, you're going to store water, you know, every day is going to be different. And then one day you're going to gain a pound, next day you, you can lose a pound and you lose a pound, nothing to do with, with body fat and you think you're on the right route. And then you'll gain a pound or two pounds the next day and you think you've gained two pounds of fat. Have you fuck? You know, it's, it, it, isn't, it isn't like that. If you want to be doing consistent weighing yourself on a scale, okay, if that's even something that you want to do, then do it at least, you know, no more than once a week. Spread it out two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, you know, or think about pictures in the mirror. Think about measurements around, around the hips, waist, bust, all, all that kind of stuff, arms, whatever it may be, okay? Go for those visual indicators. Your dress size is probably perhaps more than, than, than scale weight. Um, going to extreme is counterproductive in terms of like calorie drastic um, diets. Okay, so January is not far around the corner, so you may be tempted to jump on a 800 calorie or 200 calorie diet or something like that. But going to extreme is counterproductive. You will set up your body to store body fat when you go back to eating normally because 800 calories will be unsustainable. Okay, so you are pretty much you know, doubling the quantity of fat cells in your body, you're increasing the size of the fat cells uh, in your body because your body has gone on a bit of a famine. So next time it gets fuel and energy in it, it's going to want to hoard and hold on to that fuel as much as possible because it doesn't know when it's going to get its next meal, okay? Because your body, although built in 2000 BC, doesn't know that lunch times are one o'clock and dinner times are six o'clock kind of thing, okay? It's still operating off its fundamental principles of using fat cells to, to, to store energy, okay? So don't go too hard, don't go too extreme. It'll be harder to lose that weight. And if you want an example of it, I've used it before in other workshops, is Oprah Winfrey. Yep, she is the example. She was slight, you know, she was fine. For all accounts, she was absolutely fine. Want to lose a little bit, regain, lose a little bit, regain. And then within about two years, she was really, really obese, okay? Really obese. Um, so yeah, don't go too hard too, too soon. Uh, be the tortoise, slow and steady wins a race. Okay, slow and steady wins a race. If you're looking for a barometer, you know, you're looking at roundabout maybe a pound a week, depending where you're at. Okay, you know, not much more, not much less than that. You want to be slow and con con consistent. And the first few weeks, probably drop off a little bit more, and then it will slowly steady out as you get to your kind of your body's ideal body weight. Not what you think is your body's ideal body weight, but your body's internal sort of set um, weight that it thinks it should be at for, for, for optimal health, okay? That, now, that could be a difference, yeah? You could think that your optimal weight is 55 kilograms, but your body is saying, not a chance, Susan, it's fucking 60 kilograms, right? So they're going to really, really struggle to lose those last couple of kilos. That's where you're going, okay? And again, perhaps that's the conversation that you need to have to think yourself, do I really, really have to be down to 55 or you know, is being lean and athletic and, and comfortable with my food relationship more important nowadays, okay? That's totally for you to decide, certainly not for me. Sleep and de-stress, uh, two easy winners, all right? I sound so really boring, I know, I know, <laughs> two easy winners, but sleep and de-stress, make time for yourself for this one. And I know it's perhaps difficult, particularly if you've got a young family or, 
you run your own business or anything like that, you know, and obviously COVID's not really helped much at all, but um, you've got to try to do your best. So as I said, just a few moments ago, don't try to go from zero to zero, try to find a compromise. Yeah. If you make small marginal gains across a few different areas, you will sub subsequently have a big result, a big outcome at the end. But sleep is the only time for your body to recharge and reset. Yeah. Every night, no doubt, you're like me, you put your phone into a charger and let it get fully charged, right? That's your sleep time as well. That's when you lay down on that bed and your bed and your bed becomes the, 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 the charger. Okay. De-stress. Everybody's different, but yoga, walks, reading, meditation, social catch-ups with friends, social media breaks even, becoming more and more popular to come off of Instagram and Facebook for like a week or two. Brilliant, yeah, whatever. Because social media does have a very, very big, you know, comparison life um, issue, okay, where we constantly look at, we constantly see other people, we constantly see lean, fit, healthy people. They're not living your lifestyle, but we're thinking that we're missing out. We think that we should be that, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So it definitely warrants um, a little bit of thoughts as well. Um, and of course, stress causes emotive and comfort eating, which is the root cause for binge eating. Yeah. So, you know, that's the underlying thing uh, is that kind of emotive reaction. Weight training. So this is where we build the buns and guns. OK, weight training. Now, weight training, fantastic for a number of reasons. I'm just going to quick, quickly run, run through them. Activates more muscle tissue, type one and type two. OK, you get a bigger and longer calorie burn. So think about extending the calorie burn from out with your 30 minute or six minute workout now crossing over into eight hours, 12 hours, 24 hours, right? What are we trying to do to lose weight? Burn more calories over the day and over the week. Okay. So that's where that starts. Weight training starts trumping cardio any day. And you can argue the point. If you do weight training in a certain way or do it correctly, you're doing cardio anyway, because guess what? You're using your heart and lungs, which is basically what cardio is short for, right? Cardiovascular. Cardio, heart, vascular, lungs, all right? If you're not breathing while you're doing squats and cleans and presses and things like that, then I don't know what, you turn into a zombie, okay? You need to be breathing and need to be breathing hard. Um, more stronger muscles, more calories, okay? So think about that lean athletic body shape as well. Uh, more stronger muscles, better posture, and better bone density, all right? One of the biggest issues for women as they age is osteoporosis. How do you prevent osteoporosis? well-balanced, varied diets, okay, weight training. Those are the two big, big, big things, okay? Obviously, things like not smoking, not being a heavy, heavy drinker have a big impact as well. Environmental things, so you're not literally, you know, living hopefully too smoke-logged or in a, a city center and you get out as much as you can into fresh air. All those environmental impacts do have a, a, an, an impact, but it is it, you're massively down to diet, varied diet, okay, you know, and, and weight training. Okay, so bone density, posture. Um, and skinny fat is so 1980s. Okay, and I'm pretty sure everybody, that's not face shaming or anything like that uh, by any means, but it's that, um, you know, body shape where there is no real shape. We're literally just skin on top of bone, skin on top of skeleton. Okay, you know, if we're role models, fitness instructors, we want to be lean, athletic, healthy, fitness, and, and exude passion and confidence and all those kind of stuff, we need a little bit of shape. Yeah, uh, I always used to use Jessica Innes as, 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 as an example. Um, you know, that was, I think, 2012, London, so a long time ago. But, you know, that she's not rich. She's not like overly anything, just, a, a, you know, a lean, healthy kind of, kind of shape. So um, if she didn't have muscle on her, she'll be a walking skeleton. Okay, it's the muscle that's giving her that little bit of shape. So weight training, absolutely massive because it, 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 it still also kicks in a bit of test. test Testosterone, bigger part of testosterone. So if you wanted to keep that high up, which is a big fat loss burner, like, like hormone, okay? Weight training is really key for that. For fat loss, weight training is key. For bone density, weight training. So if you are only doing things like cardio stuff, you know, body attack, body combat, perhaps spin, yoga, Pilates, whatever else, try to implement one or two weight training sessions throughout the week as well. So for me, like something like body pump is a, a bare minimum, right? If you do two or three pumps a week, you know, cool. You're, you're, you're doing all right. That's, 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 that's what I'll call bare, bare minimum. Okay. It's kind of weight training, but it's high reps, low, low weight. You know, if I had to, if you had a blank schedule, you know, I would say something like two proper weight training sessions in the gym, you know, two of your favorite cardio hobbies, anything, 
and then two, whatever. What we know again, mindful stuff. One Pilates uh, or one yoga, one body balance, whatever else like that. Okay, just vary it as much as you can. Do what you enjoy. That's the most important thing. But try to get lifting the gym, and it, it can be as simple as three times ten squats, rows, presses. You know, there's so much information out there. You know, doubt yourself. A lot of people will be PTs. You know, we we kind of know the compound movements we want to be doing. We're not too worried about little trusty kickbacks. We're more more worried about doing presses and rows and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So, um, I'll leave it as that mindful eating pretty important this one. So the next time you have an urge to eat or snack. Okay. And it happens all the time. Okay. It happens all the time. Um, ask yourself this question. Okay. Get it into my half African, half uh, Scottish accent and say, is this real hunger or is this fake hunger? Okay. And what those two things mean essentially is real hunger builds up slow. Okay, it builds up slow. Your stomach starts to kind of rumble, and you feel satisfied after you've you've eaten, and you're more than happy to wait five or ten minutes to cook something or to prep something. Yep, you can wait that 10 minutes to actually make something or yeah, a bit of prep, a bit of cook, or wait something to cook off in a, in a pan or put it in the grill or something like that, okay? You, you can wait till you actually cook something. That's real hunger, okay? Very different to fake hunger. Fake hunger is often an, uh, is, is quick and often triggered by emotive or the subconscious. You want a quick snack, right? And you go to the same kind of trigger foods. It's the same two or three foods that you go to. And it's in that same corner in the cupboard that somehow, as much as you hate to see them there, you still buy them every week. Okay. It's that damn fairy that keeps buying the milky nut chocolate or whatever it may be. Okay. It, it's a never ending supply of chocolate crisps or savory snacks or pretzels or whatever it may be. Okay. Um, and you don't feel good about it afterwards. Okay. It's just, it's a very uh, instinctive, um, impulsive, you know, trigger quick just uh, as the same highly palatable foods okay so next time you have the urge to go to the kitchen to get something to eat ask yourself the question then this is the key if you think yourself all right okay okay time to be responsible right time to make some changes i'm feeling like this is fake hunger now what do i need to do to sort of not eat okay a 10 minute distraction all right 10 minutes is all you need to ride that wave ride the urge in in um disorder eating kind of circles we talk about riding the urge okay riding the wave those two um comments those, those two phrases so for 10 minutes all you need to do go and um go do a wash go walk the dog go walk around the block a little bit yep go get your gym bag bag packed go clear out the car go empty your bin or something go and go pick up the phone phone a friend okay whatever Go and do something for 10 to 15 minutes and then see if you're still hungry again, okay? Most times, I guarantee you will not be, okay? Because you now distract yourself away from that emotive, subconscious, automatic bad habits of like, oh, I've co I'm coming from work, I'm a bit peckish, I've got to wait till the kids are home till eight o'clock, whatever it may be, or oh, I'm just going to the straw and then num, 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 okay? Next time, stop yourself, ask yourself the question. Come on from work, you've got two hours to kill before dinner time, right, 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 what can I do? Go do something else, right? Just distract yourself. Um, and if you're and if you're a mum, you'll know how to do this. I have a, 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 a daughter as well, and when she's in the shops and wants something, I'm sure it's that distraction technique. It's like, oh, look, look, no, look over here, kind of thing. You know, look away from from what you're kind of wanting, sort of thing. So uh, you want to practice that you, you, yourself, I'm, I'm sure. So mindset, last last um, last slide, not last slide, um, last point. So it's easy to form into into the um the thinking that your body weight is who you are yeah we put a lot of weight a lot of onus on this scale number all right you are fucking way more than a number on the scale okay that's my um that's my my, my motivation speak for tonight okay is <laughs> to take that away with you you're way more than a number on the scale the value for for you to your friends your family is not by how many likes or attention you get on social media either okay and we can do that subconsciously because it's a dopamine hit uh, dopamine hit literally is like a pleasure button, okay? Uh, and all puns uh, excuse, because I've managed to keep things quite uh, out of the gutter tonight, but that is like a pleasure button. So seeing like, seeing attention, seeing that kind of stuff, it's an easy, addictive thing, okay? I'm good of it. I think you, 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 would, you know, 
everybody's guilty of it in one shape or form, perhaps just depending how much so, okay? Um, build yourself up and start to be, start a be kind campaign for yourself, all right? We're always very quick to talk about be kind and don't do this and don't do this to everybody else, yet we always leave ourselves like at the end. Uh, one of my um, current and private clients, again, you know, massive work, big family, uh, you know, um, own, own business, always getting left for last, always kind of kind of suffering. And just putting in a little bit of self-care time can literally be two times 15 minutes a week. It can be 210, 215, 220, whatever. It could be an hour where you literally, you can just sit, you know, on a chair, cup, cup of tea, cup of coffee, whatever it is, or lie down on the floor, lie on your bed and just do nothing. Just totally desensitize, totally chill out. You know, make sure that you are, are a priority as well. Because if you're not looking good and, and feeling good and, and, and a good place, you're always going to struggle to look after other people or, or, or help others, okay? Always. And of course, happiness, confidence come from, um, from within first and, and foremost, okay? Confidence, happiness comes, from, um, comes within. Then and there. So to take away in the summary, which I think we're just about, oh, 45 minutes. So yeah, focus on the controllables, okay? There is no shortcuts or quick fix. Nutrition and lifestyle, that is the focus. I said there is symptom management. So if you're going through menopause or you're about to or whatever else, and you've got you know, there's there's maybe ten different symptoms from as I said from urinary tract infections to hot sweats to, to hot flush sorry night sweats to hot flushes to to dryness to to um, you know just moods to everything else. These can be managed you know symptomatically. Okay, so you can do things that can help them, but a lot of those points will help those symptoms uh, symptoms. If things are really, really, really bad, then yes, by all means, you need to go see a doctor, possibly see about HRT, okay? But focus first on nutrition and lifestyle. The seven-step plan, you can take that away. Um, you'll begin this, this presentation, but, you know, print it off, put it up, make your own one, whatever it may be, put it up to the fridge, put it somewhere where you can see it every day and try to keep yourself accountable as, as possible. Be the tortoise, slow and steady winter race. Embrace the changes as well, okay? Try, try not to deny it. Don't get too stressed out by it if, if possible. You know, don't be fearful. Um, try not to create worry and overthink. You know, it's so easy to get in a, oh, what if? What if I can't do that? What if I can't do body attack like that anymore? What if I can't do that? What if I don't fit into my favorite jeans anymore, right? So you've, you, when the minute you start saying what if, what if, you've created a problem out of nothing, okay? Right now, you have no problem. When you overthink like that, you now create a problem, okay? So now in your head, you've now got anxiety about a problem that wasn't there until you start creating the problem, okay? Do you see how the cycle works? Yeah, so try to de-stress about it as much as possible. And I know that probably sounds really easy to say because I won't be going through that, but I'm, I'm, I'm aging as well. You know, I've got things that are happening in my body that perhaps I wouldn't want to, but you've just got to kind of brace it. Thankfully, I've been shaking my head for a long while, so I will always be looking bald. That's just the way that I will, I will forever, ever look. Um, so yeah, trying to, uh, you know, stress or create too much worry, um, over nature. And if there's any consolation, the sexiest and most confident people are happy with who they are as a person and exude energy and charisma. Okay. What we want, my focus on when we're talking to proper clients is walking into the room, walking tall, walking proud, that smile on your face and just rocking the place. Yeah. Walking in and everybody looks around and you bring that presence because you are confident, walking tall, happy in your body. And, and happy with your relationship that we're not stressed, we're not doing this. This is who you are. This is the value you have. And that's it. You know, you don't need to be liked by everybody all that, and all, all this kind of stuff. Okay. So we don't need to be a certain weight to, to suddenly have value to, to yourself. Right? That's complete bullshit. So, you know, think about that. Yeah. That, that's the goal. Walking in tour into a class, going seeing your friends and just being the, you know, that, 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 that charismatic person, just full of energy, full of charisma, full of bubble, full of passion um, and all of that. So that's pretty much it. Um, very last slide. This is first of all to say thank you very much for, for joining me. Uh, if you've all managed to hang in for the last 45 to 50 minutes, hopefully it's been worthwhile and helpful. Uh, feel free to let me know if there is any other topic you would like me to cover. Um, if you would like a couple of sort of like resources or anything else, obviously I've got my book, there's meal plans there off my link tree in the, the Instagram profile, my Instagram page. Uh, and of course, for private coaching stuff as well, feel free to reach out. Um, so some stuff there to maybe have to get you kind of started. But uh, hopefully this workshop has, has given you some real kind of clarity, seven actionable steps that are all, you know, easily achievable. And certainly think about not always trying to move 
the whole earth all at once, trying to go from that, you know, here it is here, as I said, try and move everything a couple of steps in the right direction. Lots of small marginal gains will result in a big outcome and a big change, okay? And that's how you lose fat and weight easily without throwing a life upside down or having to not eat a donut or not drink this or not do this or anything else, okay? So um, feel free to, to rewatch this anytime. Any questions, feel free to, to, to reach out.